That says it all right there. This is the Pamikikimak Cree Nation, also known as Cross Lake. 500 kilometers due south of here is Winnipeg. Nobody wants to hear this, and I don't really want to say it, but when you arrive here, it feels like a different country. I don't mean to single out this town. It's the same across almost all remote First Nations. Recently, you probably heard about the suicides, especially among Aboriginal youth. It got so bad here that in March, they called a state of emergency. But that's not the story I'm here to tell. I came on the goose hunt to meet the people who are trying to make things better. You go opposite. The feathers are going this way, you go opposite. That's Carrie Muswagon, teaching his grade eight students to pluck a goose. Once you get good at it, it's peanuts. Carrie is the cultural awareness teacher at Mikasu School in Cross Lake. He wants to help these kids. In the midst of the crisis in town, he's brought a dozen or so of his students out here to the bush for a few days. It's part of who we are. It's custom. It's, it's our practice. It's our tradition. If we don't teach them, who's going to teach them? So, I you say Gusin Kriboy, Angel. Niska. Niskawa. Nikawa. So does it help? Is coming here what these kids need? That's Justin Umperville. He's 14 years old. Do you like coming to the camp? I don't like it. I love it. How come? Because I, I, this is the stuff I like to do. Like hunting, trapping, and like all, all, those outdoor, all those outdoor stuff. I don't really like to stay inside, and like, you know, it gets lonely, like a cell, it feels like a cell. Here it feels like wide open and like free, I guess. It's quite a blessing to be here. Tell me about this, you know, in Cross Lake, what are the challenges of living there for, for young people like yourself? Pure pressure, definitely. What do you mean? People, you'll see people hanging out on walls in schools and like, and they'll offer you a smoke and stuff. But I don't really like to do that stuff. Even people younger than I am just start drinking and getting high. And like, it's, it's not good, it's not a good thing at all. What are the other uh, hard parts about being a young person in town? Well, um, there's it's quite a lot of suicides. Like, uh, my, myself, I'm not suicidal, but like, you never know who is. They can like be smiling in the face and like, and you never know, they'll be dead inside. <laughs> what do you mean? Fake it until you make it. Everyone got to die anyways. Everyone's gonna die. I'm gonna die, you're gonna die. Kaimama's gonna die. They're gonna die. This goose died. That's pretty shocking to hear from a kid who's barely a teenager. But then again, around here, maybe it isn't. At one point this past winter, there were a hundred kids in Cross Lake on suicide watch. Gary believes if he teaches the kids about their culture, then they'll feel better about themselves. That's where the goose hunt comes in. It's fundamental to being Cree, always has been. Your safety is safe at all times. When you're ready to shoot, that's when you go like this. Don't come up here, take the safety off and come up, okay? After you're done shooting, put the safety on, but always treat a gun like it's loaded. Treat all guns like they're loaded. We're going to set the pistol twig. It's very uh, hard right now. There was a chain of suicides that happened in our community. 
and I was kind of hesitant to bring kids here to learn how to shoot a gun and you know I was I was kind of worried you know in the back of my mind should I be taking kids out now that it, that this is happening but then I listened to my heart and I said that's where they belong out here maybe this will help them cope they start to feel there's a, the spirit starts to come alive <laughs> you stand here, where do the geese come from? This way. They come. Here they come, actually. Oh, you can hear them. Yeah, and that's the main thing. One of the... You listen. Seven. You remember seven? <laughs> Justin, be careful now. After spending all morning in the blind, calling geese, waiting, it happens. Get up, get up, get up, just go around. Just go. Ready? You guys, ready? Just shoot once, go. Shoot it. Go ahead, guys, shoot. Good shot. Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> shoot, shoot the other one. The other one. Chloe, shoot. Oh, oh, that is suffer. Okay, I'll shoot it. I'll finish it off. Okay. On. Okay. <sighs> How's that feel? Rush. rush. <laughs> what a rush. Good rush. Yeah. There you go. Wait, I think I hear something. <sighs> that's that Good oh, shooting, so guys. <laughs> right on. That says it all right there. And that's why we bring kids up. Proud of yourself? Yeah, very. Very proud. Using the log to test the ice, Carrie leads the kids out to pick up their geese. Oh, not too close. Stay back a little bit. I'll call you anyways. Justin, grab this one. Wait there, Justin. Just when you saw his face, his face lit up with happiness and that's the ultimate goal is for them to be happy when they're here. Well, that was good for the kids. Good shot. So what happens to the goose now? And Justin will pluck it, he'll clean it, and take it home for dinner. What's your mom going to think when you bring a goose home? <laughs> She's going to get all nerdy and embarrassing, like, like, oh! <gasps> I'm pretty sure that's a 14-year-old's way of saying his mom will be proud. And that's key. Maybe feeling good about themselves is what will keep these kids safe. I try to tell them to try and live a good life, you know. Just like well, here we in Cree we call this Minup Matsu and the good life. It's simple, it's it's easy, it's it's nice to be outdoors and You talk to Kerry about his own life and it's easy to see why he believes in the goose hunt. I was out every weekend throughout my childhood with my dad in the bush. So I he kept me occupied. And I thank him for that, you know. There's many times I thank him, like, where would I be if I didn't have you kind of thing, you know. So in that way, when you asked me earlier about the kids, you know, is, does this help? It has sure helped me because I didn't have time to think about the problems in the community. or So it helped me out a lot. Are you like a dad to some of these kids? I like to think I am, because when people ask me how many kids do you have, I say 400, because <laughs> I, I treat them all like my sons and my daughters. Grab those two geese, bud. Teach the kids how to clean their goose. Ready? You're gonna roll up your sleeves, huh? One of the kids Carrie watches over is 13-year-old Tyrell Hallcrow. A member of Tyrell's family took their own life earlier this year. He was in my class actually when we got the news and he was crying and he gave me a hug right away and I hugged him and it was pretty emotional. So we gave him time to grieve. We wanted him to come out and take a break from Cross Lake and 
get out in the wilderness and be with Mother Nature and with his friends, with his classmates, and take a break from uh, the community. Let's check this out real quick. Okay, it's ready. What do you like about being out here? Mm, the hunting and the, the hunting, the fire, the tea, and that you're free. Yeah. I feel happy coming out and I just feel free. Yep. That's good. It is. Are there things that go on in town that you don't like? The, the talk about suicide there, yeah, that's what I don't like. What do you mean? Mm, there, was a, there was recent suicides in our town and one of them Three of them were close to me, so I didn't really, that's why I don't like being in town that much. I mean, why do you think people do it? I don't know, I guess they were sad, depressed, mad. And they were missing the people that went on before them. That's probably, probably why, yeah. Have you ever thought about it? Mm, I have a couple times maybe, but I never attempted. Like, I don't know, I just like start thinking about them and I was, ooh, a spider. And I started missing, and I was like missing them, like I want to see them again. So that's why I think about that, but not all the time. You're a young person, you live there, you're living this, you've lost three people. What's, what's the solution? Like, how do you make this thing go away? How do you make it better? I just talk to my mom, talk to my friends, sometimes go to church. I don't know. I pray before, every time before I go to sleep. And that's pretty much what I do. See them? They're coming. Does it help coming out here into the woods? It helps me forget. It helps me. It just kind of helps me accept that they're gone. So I don't have to stop, so I don't have to keep missing them. I think we got one at, the, at that Look, island there. other one that's still alive there. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. It's pretty obvious that out here the kids are happy. Oh, you missed Is it the answer to all the problems they face? Again, again. Probably not. But maybe they can take the pride they found here back home. How does that feel? Mm, felt good. Yes. Nick Purden, CBC News, Pimikikamak Cree Nation, Manitoba.